It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Clark Howard Show, where our mission is to serve you and empower you so you make better financial decisions in your life. If you hear a website referenced on one of our podcasts, we try to link to all of them in the episode notes on Clark.com. And if you're watching on YouTube, in the description. In this episode, do I even have to say it? It's Clark Stinks time. And Clark Stinks is something that I'm surprised that people are really polarized about. But I think it's really a valuable, valuable segment of our show, which opens me up to ways of thinking about things and seeing things I might not have considered otherwise. And there's clearly been an uptick in crime all across America Rural areas, suburban areas, exurban areas, urban areas. We've gone through a very virtuous cycle with crime for decades. It's now reversed. So I want you to be safe. And so we're getting more and more questions from people about should they get a security system for their home? And if so, what? I've got some thoughts for you on that coming up. But without further ado, it's time to hear how I'm stinking it up. Slightly stinky, Clark. I keep hearing you say, don't ever have an account at a mega bank. I have held accounts at Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America. They always pay me for the accounts in the form of bank bonuses. So there is a reason to hold accounts at these banks every year or two, depending on the terms. Thanks for all you do, Pete in Boston. Pete, thank you. It's interesting because we had uh, someone who commented on this back um, last spring or early summer about how they have been using these offers from the giant monster mega banks to get these bonuses, $200, $500, $1,000, whatever, to open an account. I got one from, it was one of the bigs, there was something they called a gold account. They were mm. going to pay me $1,000 if I would put this money on deposit, and I passed. But you got to be the kind of person who, like Pete, um, keeps solid record that oh, I've completed the time period to get the money from, you know, from Wells or from Boa or whoever. And as long as you do that, then yes, it is free money. They're counting on inertia that you'll open the account and never getting around to closing it. Lots about this one, Clark. I'm going to read two. I hate to say this, but not only does Clark stink, another listener does too. A listener commented on how difficult over-the-air TV DVRs are to use, and Clark agreed. TiVo makes an over-the-air DVR complete with a guide and all the conveniences. There's a subscription fee for an all-in price. We have had one for several years, and it works perfectly. But at this point, instead of buying the TiVo, look at the Tableau. OTA DVR as it supports ATSC 3.0, the new broadcast standard. I enjoy the show, Eric. And then this from Chris. Clark mentioned over the air DVRs. I love my Amazon recast. You need a Fire TV or Fire Stick on sale recently for $11.99. But once plugged in, it finds the DVR and you're ready to go. It's very easy to use. It's $229 or two seventy nine for one terabyte. But there are no annoying monthly subscriptions or fees, and it's great. Lots of other... I, I want to uh, thank all of you, and could we do a uh, little write-up on over-the-air DVRs at yeah, Clark.com? Yeah, I like that idea. Because we do so much on the streaming guide. Sure. Yeah. Why not give people a way to get content for free and have a DVR tagged along with it? You got it. Okay. Clark, sometimes you make simple stuff complicated. A subscriber asked you about giving their private information to an internet service to store their travel ID, such as Global Entry and TSA PreCheck. No, no, no. That was about clear. I think clear storing. Okay. I just scanned my Global Entry card, my main passport page, and driver's license onto a one-page PDF document, assigned a password, then downloaded it to my phone. When I returned on a Norse Airways flight from Oslo to Fort Lauderdale, I skipped the large line and went to the global entry desk. They took my image with the kiosk, and an agent looked at the docs on my phone and passed me through in less than two minutes. Gene. Gene, okay. Flew so Norse, Gene, too. <laughs> how could you not have told us what Norse Airways was like? I know. If you're not familiar, Norse is um, uh, the latest attempt of a Scandinavian discounter offering ultra, ultra cheap flights from various markets in the United States to Europe. The fares have been in the 200s, 300s round trip before all the junk fees. And uh, I just 
am waiting to hear what people are experiencing and how they like it. Hope Springs Eternal, uh, going all the way back to Sir Freddie Laker and Laker Airways, breaking the uh, full fare airline cartels from the United States to Europe and Norse is the latest attempt. Clark said that 2023 was going to be a good year to buy electric vehicles. While it might be true that there will be more electric vehicles becoming available in 23, the wait lists are long. Not sure we'll be able to walk in and get an EV right away like it was buying cars in the old days. Although you might have stunk it up a little on this one, my wife and I will continue to listen to you because we think you're great, Larry. Larry, thank you. So 23 is going to lead to a bunch of new models of electric vehicles. Um, as automakers ramp up supply, Volkswagen has started making the ID4 in, I think, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, is where they're manufacturing in the United States. And we're going to see um, hundreds of thousands of vehicles produced by various large manufacturers of electrics uh, each year, where in the past we've been seeing. 3,000 or 5,000 or whatever. It's going to be a completely different game. And I think you're going to see the prices come down. Now, the electric vehicle market is going to work very differently because we're going to adopt the world sales method piece by piece. And the way vehicles are done in the world is totally different than what's been pretty much a uniquely American experience that a dealer will have a massive car lot trying to guess what people are going to want to buy and they'll stock those vehicles on the lot and you come in and uh, you buy the vehicle and you go home that day. The electric vehicle market is designed to world standards which is you order electronically on your phone or on a laptop exactly what it is you want your vehicle to be and then it shows up in typically one to six months, depending. And that's how, uh, for example, Ford wants to sell its electric vehicles ultimately that way, being all on an order system. So there's no vehicles made that don't fit what you want as a customer, and they don't end up making vehicles that later they have to discount in a down cycle where they thought there'd be buyers, and there aren't. So ultimately, it's a much more economically efficient way to sell vehicles. And a dealer would go from having a lot that are these massive car lots they have now to having something about the size of a, um, let's say, a large convenience store would be all they'd need in addition to the service area. Clark recommended using a single card for online purchases to a recent listener who had gotten their credit card number stolen. A better solution would be to use a virtual number offered by several credit card providers. Jeff. Completely true, Jeff. The virtual numbers are the safest way to do it. But at the same time, if you use a card that you have virtual numbers for elsewhere, you're still going to have a problem where that card is going to have to be reissued and you're going to have a new number. I like having one card that you use for the online purchases that you make. Even in doing what you're saying, if they offer virtual numbers, pay for things using the virtual number system available to you. Clark does not stink, but I think only recommending the Nest thermostat is missing the boat. There are many smart thermostats that are much cheaper with the exact features of the Nest. I switched to the $74 Wise thermostat, and it has been working great for several years. A much better deal than $250, Lee. Lee, thank you. And we haven't talked about Wise as a company for a long time. Wise is W-Y-Z-E. They see what's really popular in the consumer electronics space, and then they make a version that they try to make the quality equivalent, but at a much lower price. So they are a Me Too that makes current devices using current technology instead of an innovator. Their innovation is they sell these things a lot cheaper. And they're the ones that came out originally with the Wise Cams, which have stood the test of time, that are home security cameras that started historically at $25 versus how much the cameras were from Google and from Amazon and others that sold home security cameras. So WISE is a WISE choice. 
How's that? Wise is a wise choice. You should check out all the different items that Wise sells. Okay, another about thermostats. I love the podcast. Thanks for teaching me so much. However, your thermostat device stinks worse than a baby blowout diaper. You missed the mark recommending 72 as a nighttime setting as opposed to 67 to 69. Here's the deal. You're trading money for health and life. Terrible idea. Lowering room temperature at night is one of the easiest foolproof ways to improve your sleep, which is scientifically known to improve lifespan, general health, mood, your ability to work, and your interpersonal relationships. The value of better sleep and health and money far exceeds the few hundred dollars you'll save, save set at 72, tossing and turning all night. And uh, he, Chris recommends, don't take my word for it, read Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. And he did sign it, Chris, the newly converted sleep nerd. So, uh, Chris, this also could have been posted by my son, Grant. Um, and yes, I have read a number of the items this past year about how sleeping at a much lower temperature will, over time, improve your health. Um, the other things is uh, don't drink caffeinated beverages in the evening and go to bed at the same general time every night earlier than you historically have gone and try to get up within a half hour of when you normally would get up seven days a week instead of changing your cycle. My aura uh, says the same tracker thing, ring. by the way, mm -hmm. my, my tracker. And the other thing aura is mad at me about, I tend, like so many people, I stay up later on the weekends and aura is just... I mean, really, really frustrated with me about that, <laughs> like it's a human being. Sounds like me with my son. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, the advice you give is absolutely true. Two things can be true at once. One, you're going to save money on your bills if you keep the thermostat higher. Two, you're going to potentially improve your health significantly if you sleep at a lower temperature. Clark, I've been a loyal listener for years, but your constant bashing of China stinks. You keep saying they wish to do us harm and they're going to hit us with a cyber attack. This just fuels the rising hatred of Asians that started after COVID. Please stop this. Yes, it's personal, as our child was adopted from China. Thank you, John. John, thank you very much. Um, I have no bias or prejudice against the Chinese people or people of any nation, culture, race, religion, anything. That's not my thing. Communist China is a problem. The dictator of China does wish, I believe, harm to us and wishes to seize free China and Taiwan and who knows what else. So it is not, I, I know the, the uh, hatred and prejudice against Asians and the violence against Asians in the United States, it should be an embarrassment to all of us, no doubt. And my um, attacks on the communist dictatorship should never be considered as an attack on the people of China, only on the dictatorship and the communist party. And, and no one wants me talking about politics, so yeah. sorry about that. Last year, I was going to submit a Clark Stinks complaint. I thought that his recommendation regarding windfall cash, windfall cash being put in some types of savings account, especially the mattress at that time. I wanted to reply, why not put it in a Vanguard ETF? But Clark was right because I've lost money with the stock market being so volatile. So Clark doesn't stink. He comes out smelling like a rose, and that's why we love him, Julie. <laughs> Julie... <laughs> Don't give me too much credit here. So the whole thing is time. Doesn't matter how much money you have that you're looking to save or invest. It's the time period till which you need the money that sets how it is invested. So it's possible that you can have a pile of money, some of which you're going it would be great if you have a pile of money, some of which you're going to need shorter term, some you're going to need intermediate term, some you can put away for long term. Those are three different purposes, and what you do with the money is three different things. So short term, money has to be parked. Intermediate term, uh, if you define that as somewhere five to seven years, it can be conservatively invested. And longer term, 
particularly anything 10 or more years, that's when it's really core and key that money be invested in the capitalist system, in uh, companies and in their future prospects for earnings, which is what you do when you buy an index fund or an ETF. And so it's the time period of the money that determines what you do with it. So um, there are times, though, that, that regardless of where interest rates are, there's always money that needs to be available for a rainy day. And it goes in savings, whether savings is earning about zero or savings is earning a lot or somewhere in between. you got to have the money for the rainy day. Now, coming up next, you got to protect yourself from someone who's up to no good. And we're going to talk about how to protect your homestead from people who might wish you harm. I've talked a lot about the changes with the home security system industry. It used to be one that required a skilled professional to come in and design a system for your house. And not that many years ago, it involved them running a huge number of wires in your home. But technology changes over time. And wireless security systems are generally what are being installed by professionals or by you and me as amateurs. And so having the capability of installing wireless systems has made it viable for an individual to install his or her own. Uh, I guess it was two years ago that we did for, um, I did for television and I did for Clark.com where we followed along with me installing my own security system in my home. And I'm not very capable around the house. Let's just say that I'm being kind to myself. But I, even I was able without much time or much effort to install a very thorough home security system. I installed um, uh, monitoring of um, smoke and fire integrated in the system, all the door and window protectors. Uh, I've got battery backup, all those things. So the question is, how good are these home security systems? Consumer Reports has done, as they do, such thorough research on home security systems. And the ones you install yourself, Consumer Reports didn't give any of the systems a score in the 80s or above. The highest any system rated pretty much almost an equivalent score, 76 to Simply Safe, 74 to the ring alarm system. So these are passing scores under Consumer Reports' tough love. And they talk about how good these systems are. And the Simply Safe, they really liked because it came with all the security essentials, came with proper data security, and was not subject to jamming. In the case of the Ring Alarm, they were very, very happy with the security essentials, the data security. They were concerned about people being a burglar being able to jam the system. Um, most of the time, you're not going to be dealing with a professional who's going to be trying to figure out how to get in when there's an alarm. Usually, they're going to abandon the place when there's an alarm. What do these things cost? Simply safe and the ring alarm system typically costs, let's say, $150 to $300, depending on how many components you get. The difference with the two of them, how much monitoring is, monitoring is cheaper with the ring alarm system for professional alarm monitoring than it is with Simply Safe. If you're an apartment or condo dweller and you are only interested in protecting entry into your unit by the front door, Consumer Reports recommends highly the Kangaroo Front Door Security Kit. 120 bucks gets a 
good rating right up there with Ring and with Simply Safe. And the monitoring, if you want it, is roughly $8 a month. So I want you to know that using a home security system that you install yourself is a valid thing to do. And if I could do it, you could do it. Okay, let's go to some questions. This is from Brian in West Virginia. Recently, I parked and went to a retail store. Shortly after entering, they made an announcement that a vehicle in the parking lot was on fire. My vehicle was parked in front of the car that caught fire. It did minor damage like melting my grill and my headlight. The vehicle that caught fire's insurance company will not help me. What? Yeah. I don't wish to turn into my insurance because of a previous claim. How can I get this fixed and make the responsible party pay? Okay, Brian, that is ridiculous. I don't know what kind of scum insurance company <laughs> the person has whose vehicle burned up, but they're just, that is absolutely, completely unacceptable. All right, so you live in West Virginia. Insurance is regulated by the states. First thing I want you to do is I want you to call your state insurance department at their consumer line, and or you may have to do an online form, file a complaint against the insurer of the insured whose vehicle caught fire. The insurers when, don't like it when people find their way to the states, get a complaint in the database, too many complaints, starts causing a problem for the insurer under uh, periodic reviews with the state insurance department. They may then at that point say, oh, well, we thought we could beat up on Brian's wallet. Let's see what we can do. Try that first because that's going to be free. Second, you can file a suit in small claims court against the individual, not the insurer, against the individual whose vehicle caught fire. They will then be defended by their insurance company, which will then pay you the money because all they're trying to do is be a bully, and you got to let them know you're not going to be bullied back. And I want to hear back from you, Brian, that you were able, whatever strategy it was, got you the money back, that you were able to get it back. If you end up doing the small claims court option, you don't have to hire a lawyer. Filing fees are very low. Stand up for yourself. This is from Kevin in Tennessee. I recently purchased a small card holder wallet that can only contain two or at most three card-sized items. I'm using that instead of a more bulky wallet. How would you prioritize what items to carry if you only had two or three? Let me, let me, let me tell you what I would do. Okay. Two, it would be my driver's license and a credit card. Three would be driver's license, credit card, Debit card. Debit card? Well, ATM card. I okay. Mean, AT, I, 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 mean, I mean, everybody knows what? the term debit card. <laughs> ATM card, yes, ATM card, yes, sorry. Yes. Okay, Kevin what is he, says, what is my he? current choice is one driver's license, two credit card, three debit card, mainly for oh. ATM cash purposes. <laughs> I would really like to just have two cards, but the potential to need cash is still frequent enough that I feel like I need the debit card. Yeah, right. and I got to tell you, these, these thin wallets are so great as we do more and more with our phones. Um, I carry one now that holds um, seven cards and because I got to take work ID and stuff like that and um, holds some cash, has a little pouch, like a kangaroo pouch that holds some cash. They're great because they're so tiny. They're just slightly larger than a credit card itself and like that thick. This is from how thick would you describe? That I don't. I'm terrible with, but it's it's very small. Like quarter inch thick. Yeah. Okay. Richard in Florida says we received a notice that my 17 year old son has had a tax return submitted with his social security number. Oh. What actions should we take? <sighs> tax ID fraud, fortunately, has not been as big a problem as it's been before. So you're going to have to, even if your son had no income, there's going to be a procedure with the IRS where he's going to have to file a no income tax return. You're going to have to uh, go through the process with the IRS. It's frightfully understaffed. 
to get his name cleared that will take probably more or less a year to get uh, taken care of. If your son had income, it's actually a little easier a process because you by paper will your son will will you'll file on behalf of your son a real paper return and in future years you will be able to your son will be able to file a return with a pen code kind of process Uh, but it has been a horrible problem for so many people that peaked guess maybe in 2018 or 2019 but still it's happening at the margins at the edges and it's a hassle the good news is your son's probably not expecting some kind of giant tax refund that he would otherwise be waiting for for a year and i want to thank you so much for listening to this podcast i like to especially a time like this with people feeling like the country's so on the wrong track you may be feeling some anxiety in your own life my late father used to talk about life being 99 rounds there are times you're going to get knocked to the canvas and you got to pick yourself up dust yourself off put the mouthpiece back in and get back in the ring and life from time to time to time will hit you with a sucker punch and it's up to us Life's not always going to be peaches and cream, not always going to be an easy path. It's what we do when times are tougher and they're rougher. It's how we handle that and how we come back from that. And do not be consumed with pessimism. Because no, no matter how cloudy it is, no matter how stormy, no matter how rainy it is in life, sky always clears. The sun in the blue sky always comes back out.